Hi everyone, it's good to see you all. How was your week? How was your weekend? Your week? Yeah, my week was too cold. <laughs> I'm on the same boat, Bert. <laughs> I'm very tired of the winter already, and I feel like I just started it. <laughs> It's really bizarre today with all the snow melting. Oof. And the wind. And the wind. I had to walk my dog a little a little while ago and it was so windy that he just kept, he's a puppy. So he, he kept going after the leaves. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> he got entertained. Okay. Hola, Navy. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Bien, gracias. Qué bueno. Here's a Nelly. Hola, Nelly. Hola. Okay. We're reading a few people, so I'm just going to give everyone till 5.50. So we can, we have time. Let me start taking attendance. Magali is going to be absent. Wonder where is everyone? Yeah. This happened last Wednesday too. I think, oh, here are more people. Um, as it the snow melts, I think people are arriving later at home and then just logging in as soon as they get in. Hola Marisol. Hola Lina. Hola. De repente a lo mejor cambié yo mi pantalla porque tengo que ir a un mandado, pero yo estoy en la clase. Ok. Ok. Yeah. Cuando entremos al grupo, prende la cámara de nuevo para poder ver. Ok. Ajá. Okay. Sí. Sí. Ok. Es Reina. Hola Reina. Hola, Lina, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien. Bien, Hola, también. Este. Qué bueno. Reina está aquí. Navy está aquí. Marisol. Susana está enferma. Maribel está aquí también. Hola, Maribel. Hola. Hola, Lina. Okay. okay, I'm going to give everyone one more minute and then we will start. Okay. Okay. Let me pull the right page before I share my screen. Okay. This is... okay, so hola Carlos, hola. ¿cómo estás? Bien, bien, gracias, ¿y tú? Muy bien, qué bueno, Vero va a estar contigo, ¿verdad? Ya viene, ya viene. Okay, perfect. Hola, Isabel. Hola, Lina. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Qué bueno. Okay, here they are. Perfect. Here we have everyone. Perfect. 
Hola Mireya. Hola Mati. Hola Vianel. Hola. Hola Lina, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien. Ok, I'm going to start. I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to start with the goals of today. So I'm going to ask, let's see. Um, Mireya, um, if you could please read the goals for today. Okay. Goals for today. Goals for Wednesday, January 13th. 13th, very good. 2021. Students will continue to practice how to write a sentence utility utilizing very good the correct grammar and pronunciation b students will do some fun games in their groups and learn about martin luther king i forgot to add junior in there um martin luther king jr very good um okay So thank you, Mireya. Very good job. Um, Bert, Janice, and Kim, you can feel free to keep adding or permitting students into the chat as we continue. Um, you are all co-hosts, so you can hit, hit admit um, as soon as you see someone pop up. Um, so very quick, some announcements. Um, I am asking all of you, uh, remember that an anonymous donor gave us a gift card for Smith for every single one of you this Christmas. Um, we want to do a thank you to this anonymous donor. So I am asking all of you if you could write two to three sentences of thank you and what the gift card meant to you and your family um, by Monday to Lena, to me <laughs> via email. Um, we are going to print, we're going to put them all together, print them and add them to a thank you card for our donor. Um, in Spanish, vamos, les, como les, les enviamos eh, las tarjetas de Navidad de Smith que se le dieron a todas nuestras familias eh, antes de las Navidades. Estamos eh, haciendo una tarjeta de gracias a este donante anónimo. Así que les estoy pidiendo que por favor me escriban dos o tres oraciones bien sencillitas, como que thank you very much, eh, y lo que la tarjeta significó para ustedes en inglés, ¿ok? Traten, si hay errores, hay errores. Eh, por correo electrónico, de nuevo, dos o tres oraciones, eh, me lo envían por correo electrónico antes del lunes, ¿ok? Porque el lunes lo voy a juntar todo, lo voy a imprimir y me lo envían. Si lo pueden hacer lunes por la mañana, durante el fin de semana, hoy o el viernes, ¿ok? Eh, nuevamente, dos o tres oraciones eh, significaría mucho porque así podemos darle las gracias por ese increíble, esa increíble donación. Eh, para a homework, for homework, you have two seesaw activities, okay? We haven't used seesaw in a while. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that you remember how to access seesaw. If you need your password, um, let me know and I can reset it, okay? Si necesitan su contraseña, me dejan saber y yo se las puedo resetear eh, si no saben cómo entrar a seesaw. Pero tienen dos asignaciones de CISO, todo sobre la estructura de oraciones, que es lo que estamos discutiendo. Se, la asignación se debe el lunes. It's, the homework is due on Monday, um, Monday, January 18th, by 5 p.m., okay? Um, any questions, call me tomorrow. Remember, we're not at Teton Literacy, so call my cell phone or text me um, during ESL student office hours, okay? Between 3 and 5 p.m. on Thursday. Okay, if you have any questions on your homework. Okay, moving on. Um, uh, before I continue, does anyone have any words that you see from the goals for today that you do not understand that you would like me to clarify, clarificar? Everyone, if you're good, give me a thumbs up. Perfect. Maybe I see it. Very good. María, eh, cuando puedas, eh, no sé si estás en el teléfono, que te puedas conectar. Ok, there we go. Hola, María. <laughs> ok, perfect. So everyone's good. Ok. Um, we are going to dive into a video. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm just going to select 
this video that I have already opened. Here we go, share my sound. Okay, so here is a video. I want you to just listen. It's going to talk about three types of sentences. Okay, va a hablar de tres tipos de oraciones. The first type of sentence is a simple sentence that we talked about on Monday. Las oraciones simples que empezamos a discutir el lunes. Eh, vamos a aprender lo que es una oración compuesta y una oración compleja. Okay, a compound sentence, as you see up here, a compound sentence and a complex sentence. So we're going to learn all three types of sentences and how to use it, okay? Sentence structures. There are three types of sentence structures, simple, compound, and complex. It's important to use each of these structures because it makes our writing more engaging for the reader. Simple sentences. A simple sentence has one independent clause. That is, it has a subject, it has a verb, and it is a completed thought. Remember we talked yesterday on Monday about independent clause? Who can tell me what is an independent clause? That we talked about on Monday. La que no depende de otra oración. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Mireya. Like that it, that it can stand on its own, right? It is a complete thought, a complete mm -hmm. sentence. Very good. Acuérdate, independiente, está sola. <laughs> Here's an example of a simple sentence. Grace opened the door. It has one subject and one verb. Sometimes simple sentences have a compound subject, like in this sentence. The table and chairs need to be cleaned. So a compound sentence, it just means that es compuesto, tiene más de uno, okay? We had this in our group, I'm um, in my group on Monday, where it was the car, the truck, and the motorcycle collided on the intersection. The truck, the truck, sorry, the car, the truck, and the motorcycle are compound sentences. And collided, chocaron, is the verb, right? So it's the same thing. There can be more than one subject because they're compound, tan compuesto, tienen más de una. Simple sentences can also have a compound verb. For example, the boy smiled and nodded. Y lo mismo, in a compound verb, is the same thing. It can have two verbs, okay? The boy smiled and nodded. Nodded, quiso esto. ¿Verdad? Que dijo que sí. O sea que eh, también podemos, tuvimos oraciones el lunes. We also had sentences on Monday when we learned about this, where there was, was, there was a sentence that said, um, I believe it was the cake was, no, I forget, I forget the sentence. But it was a sentence where it had also two verbs and it brought a lot of confusion, right? Because we didn't understand that it could have two verbs because it, it, it could be a compound verb, okay? Same thing as a compound subject. Here is another simple sentence. Even though it's longer, we know it's still a simple sentence because it has one subject and one verb. Compound sentences. Compound sentences are a combination of two or more independent clauses joined together by a coordinating conjunction. So a compound sentence, this is where we get a little hard, okay? A compound sentence is two or more independent clause. Pero fíjense, no tiene ninguna oración dependiente. What is a dependent clause? Who can tell me that we talked about on Monday? A dependent. Depende de otra oración para ser completada. Correct. Very good. It depends on another sentence to be a complete sentence, right? Because it's not a complete sentence. No, so no. this one does not have dependent clause. It has two independent clauses. So two sentences that are a complete thought, a complete idea put together by words like and, or, nor, but, for, so I, words like that, that we'll learn later in class, um, you put together two sentences to make one. Okay, that is a compound sentence. And we're going to talk about this again. Remembering the acronym FANBOYS is an easy way to remember the coordinating conjunctions that we can use to join independent clauses. So this is a great trick that I really liked on this video. 
If you write fanboys, you will always remember all of your coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunction is a really fancy word of saying the word that combines two sentences. Okay, the word that you're gonna put in order to combine two complete sentences to make one. And these are words like every word, every letter stands for one. Okay, cada letra de esta palabra fanboys te, te, te recuerda cada uno de las estas palabras que, que, que unen oraciones. F for four, A for and, N for nor, B for but, O for or, Y for yet, S for so. So if you can write this on your notebook, this will be very helpful, right? Coordinating conjunctions, and you can write in Spanish. The, las palabras que unen dos oraciones completas. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. And we're gonna, we're gonna continue to learn these on Monday, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna work specifically on coordinating conjunctions on Monday. So this is an introduction. If you are done, give me the thumbs up so I can keep the video. Perfect, Mireya, Maria. Carlo Vero. Marisol y Reina, si me pueden decir si están bien. Uh, Jasmine Veo. Maribel Veo. Isabel, todo está escribiendo. Mati, avísame. Navy, avísame. Eh, Aneri, veo. Perfect, Marisol, ok. Navy, ok. Mati, ok. Perfect. Isabel, are you good? And Mar Maribel, you're good. You're oh, no veo la última palabra. ¿Cuál? ¿Es esta? Uh, después so. de yet. So, S-O. Ok. So. And like I said, we will explain all of these on Monday. Okay, we're, this is just an introduction. Very good. I'm gonna continue. Here are two simple sentences. Grace opened the door. She looked outside. Let's two complete sentences, right? Let's join them using the coordinating conjunction and. We have created a compound sentence. Grace opened the door and she looked outside. The sentence has two independent clauses. That is, both clauses are a completed thought with a subject and a verb. Here are some other compound sentences. They each have more than one independent clause and are joined by a coordinating conjunction. Okay, vean aquí lo ejemplo. I'm good at swimming. That's a complete sentence. But I don't like it, right? You're adding the but and you're combining two complete sentences into one. It was raining, so I took an umbrella. I took an umbrella and it was raining are two complete sentences, right? They're independent clauses and they're combined by so. It was late, yet I wasn't tired. I wasn't tired and it was late, are two complete sentences, independent clause, combined by yet. Okay, and the last one, I have not met Steve, nor have I met Susan. Um, there are two complete sentences added by the word nor. Nor in Spanish would be, eh, no he conocido a Steve, ni he conocido a Susan. So sería como un ni, okay? And yet, sería un aunque. Era tarde, aunque no estaba, no estaba cansado. Rain, so, in Spanish, would be, estaba lloriendo, por ende, me llevé una sombrilla. Ok, sería por ende en español. Y but, espero. ¿Es por ende o por eso? 
Por eso me llevé una sombrilla. Por eso o por ende, los dos es, es lo mismo. Es lo mismo. Okay. Y esta sería, me gusta nadar, soy bueno nadando, pero no me gusta. But I don't like it. Okay, so that would be the Spanish. Complex sentences. Complex one. sentences are composed of an independent clause and a dependent clause. Dependent clauses are not completed thoughts. So like we know already, right? A complex sentence is different because it has an independent clause, which is a complete thought, and a dependent clause, which is not a complete thought, right? It's a fragment. Here is a complex sentence. When he won the award, everyone cheered. This is the independent clause because it has one subject and one verb, and it's a completed thought. So this would be, oh, let me, I'll let him finish. This clause is a dependent clause because even though it has a subject and a verb, it's not a completed thought. Remember, we talked about a Monday on what is a complete idea, a complete sentence, and what is an incomplete sentence. So everyone cheered is your complete sentence, your independent clause. And we won, when he won the award, is not a complete thought, right? Because in Spanish it would be, cuando el ganó el premio, uh-huh, and who, <laughs> right? You need more information. This is not a complete complete thought, a complete, uh, complete sentence. So now it is, if you combine them using, in this case, a comma, it became a, com a complex sentence. Let's look at another example. Now that I have saved up, I can buy a bike. This is an independent clause because it has one subject, one verb, and is a completed thought. This is a dependent clause because it's not a completed thought. The dependent clause can go at the end of the sentence like this, or it can go first in the sentence like this. So this is important to know. It doesn't matter the order. The dependent clause can be at the beginning or it can be at the end. But it also always, always, always has a part of the sentence that is an independent clause, right? A complete thought, a complete sentence, and part of it that is not a complete sentence or a complete thought. Because think about it. I took my umbrella. That's a complete sentence. Because it was raining, because it was raining what, right? So that is not a complete sentence. If you unite them, si lo juntas, that makes one sentence that is complex. Notice that if the dependent clause begins the sentence, we use a comma to separate the clauses. See if you can work out the structure of these sentences. Carl knew lots about monkeys. What do you think is this sentence? Carl knew lots about monkeys. Is it a simple sentence, a compound sentence, or a complex? Complex? Not complex. Complex. Carl, Carl knew a lot of lots about monkeys. Which is your subject? Who are we talking about? Carl. Carl, right? right? Carl is your subject. And what's your verb? No. No, sabía, right? Past. And lots about monkeys. So this is your object, right? Because it's telling you, what did you knew? You knew a lot about monkeys. So what is this sentence? A uh, compound. Simple. Simple sentence. Very good. It's a simple sentence, right? It's just simple. One. No okay. tienen dos oraciones, ni dos verbos, ni dos sujetos. Es nada más uno. Right? If it's one, it's the easiest one, the, 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 the simple one. Right? That's right. It's a simple sentence. It has one subject and one verb. Let's try another one. Although Matt was running late, he seemed relaxed. Okay. Although Matt was running late is one clause, right? En una clausula. And he seemed relaxed is another one. So I'm going to ask you, the way we figure this out is we think about, is this a complete sentence? Although Matt was running late, 
Is that a complete sentence? Aunque oh. Matt estaba corriendo tarde in Spanish. Is that a complete sentence? No. 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 Right? No. Very good. So we have we have a dependent clause, right? This is a dependent clause. And si alguien se puede poner mute, por favor, que escuchamos las de esta atrás. And he seemed relaxed. Is that a complete sentence? Yes. 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 Yes, right? So you have a dependent clause and an independent clause. So which one is this? Simple, compound, or complex? Complex. Compound. Very good. Complex, right? Because complex is a dependent and an independent. ¿Verdad? So very good. Let's see. That's right. It's a complex sentence. It has an independent clause, which is a completed thought, and a dependent clause, which isn't a completed thought. One more. He was hungry, so he ate. He was hungry, so he ate. Okay, so let's look at let's look at the sentence. He was hungry. Is that a complete sentence? Yes. 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 Right? Very good. He was hungry is a complete sentence. What about he ate? What about he ate? The simple sentence. Say that again. It's complete sentence. Compound, right? It's a compound sentence. Very good, because you're adding the so, right? So is your coordinating conjunction, la palabra que une, ¿verdad? And he ate. Y he was hungry, son las dos oraciones completas, okay? So this is how you would figure out how, which one is it? Is it simple, compound, or complex? You have to look at your sentences and say, is it a dependent clause or is it an independent clause? Y así tú sabes cuál es. Very good. It's a compound sentence. It has two independent clauses. They are both completed thoughts, joined using the coordinating conjunction, so. Identifying different sentence structures is easy. Easyteaching.net Okay, I'm going to stop sharing the video. We're going to go back. Can everyone see my screen? See? Okay, perfect. So just to review um, very quickly, we have about 10 more minutes. Um, so a simple sentence is the sentence that just has one clause, ¿verdad? Que tiene solamente una cláusula. It can have a compound subject, like we saw, the car, the truck, and the motorcycle, that's three subjects, right? Collided in the intersection. Collided, chocaron, ¿verdad? So you can have a sentence with a compound subject, and you can have a simple sentence with a compound verb. Lina uh celebrated and um and ate her cake okay celebrated and ate son dos verbos compuesto en la misma oración right and it can still be a simple sentence because you have one clause you have a subject a verb and an object tienen siempre el formato del sujeto el verbo y el objeto como vimos en el en el video Ok, por eso es que saben si es simple. Siempre sigue la misma fórmula. Um, these are some examples. Um, if, let's see, Isabel, can you read these, sentence, these, um, these examples, please? Ok. She wrote, she completed her English test. He organized his clothes by color. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that word again so you can say it one more time. He organized okay. and you don't pronounce the E, so just pronounce the Z and the D. Okay, he organized his clothes by color. They study science and math for many hours. Very good. So she is the subject right? The subject is yellow. Green is the verb, wrote. And blue is the object, right? 
So for example, she completed, completed what? Her English test. Who completed it? She. What did she, com what did she do? She completed. So these are the questions that you can ask to find out what's your subject, what's your verb, and what's your object, like we talked about on Monday. And here it would be, who are we talking about? He, what is he doing? He organized. What did he organize? His clothes. How did he organize? By color. Color is your prepositional phrase, right? It gives you more information about the object. It can tell you how, it can tell you when, and it can tell you where. And you know this because of our prepositions, right? Prepositions tell you where, when, and how. About prepositions of place, prepositions of time, and preposition of movement, right? The ones that we know already. Um, and the last one, they would be who, right? Who, who, who studied, who are we talking about? They, what did they do? They studied, what did they study? Science and math for how long? For many hours, okay? So that is a simple sentence. Then a compound sentence, like we saw in the video, is always, always two independent clauses. So it can be two simple sentences because the simple sentences are independent, right? Son oraciones completas. Así que la única manera que vas a crear oraciones compuestas es si tienes dos oraciones que son pensamientos completos. Por ejemplo, eh, I cooked for many hours, there wasn't enough food. Ok, dos oraciones completas. Y entonces la estamos añadiendo con una palabra, con but. Ok, puede ser, acuérdense de fanboys. For, and, but, nor, uh, I believe, so, and I'm missing one. Um, but they're all, you can only combine them using coordinating conjunctions, que son esas palabras que vimos en el fanboys. Or it can be a comma, too. So this is how we would do a compound sentence. Uh, Maria, can you read the examples? Okay. Uh, she completes her literature review. Say this word she, again and pronounce the D. She complete, completed. She completed her literature review and she creates her reference list. Very good. She created. Asegurate de pronunciar la de. Very good. Okay. He organized he searches by them, then he updates his reference list. Very good. He organized his sources by theme, then he updated his reference list. Very good. Okay. Uh, they studied APA rules for many hours, but they realized there was still much to learn. Very good. They're all complete sentences added with words and, but, or semicolons. Semicolons es la punto y coma. Okay, so you can use a semicolon or you can use a coordinating conjunction. Very good. So these are the compound sentences. And the last one, the complex sentence, is always very easy to tell because they have an independent clause and a dependent clause. Siempre va a haber una oración que no hace sentido sola, de esas dos oraciones que tienes complejas, una no va a hacer sentido sola y una sí va a hacer sentido sola. Okay, one is going to be dependent and one is going to be independent. You can have more than one dependent, okay, but you always need a dependent and an independent clause. And here are some examples. Um, Raimundo, I'm just calling in order. Uh, Raimundo, if you can read three of my examples, and then Maribel can read the remaining three. Okay. Uh, because my coffee was too cold, I heated it in the microwave. Very good. Although he was wealthy, he was still unhappy. She returned the computer after she noticed it was damaged. 
noticed. 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 Very good. After she noticed, it was damaged. Very good. Um, you notice that the yellow is independent. It can be a sentence. Uh, sorry. Mm, I think I might have done these the other way around. Um, so this sentence right here, because my coffee was too cold, this is dependent, ¿verdad? No puede estar sola. I heated it in the microwave is your, deep, is your independent. O sea, que mis colores están al revés. Aquí sí están correcto. Although he was wealthy is your dependent clause. And he was still unhappy is your independent clause. Independent stands alone, complete thought. Dependent, incomplete thought, not a complete sentence. She returned the computer is a independent clause. And after she noticed it was damaged is a dependent clause. So you always have one of these. You always have a dependent clause. Maribel, if you can read the next three. Whenever price goes up, customers buy less products. Mm -hmm. After the tornado hit, there was very little left standing. The museum yeah. was very interesting I'm as I expected. Expect. Very, very good, Maribel. Um, as I expected. And you can tell that this is a dependent clause. Whenever prices goes up, that's not a full sentence, right? Customers buy less products. That is an independent clause. After the tornado hit would be the dependent. And there was very little left standing um, was the, your independent. And lo mismo acá. The museum was very interesting. Your independent. And as I expected, your dependent clause. And then the last thing I would just want to quickly touch on that we also talked on Monday is your run on sentences. On Monday, we talked about the run on sentence being something that doesn't end, right? That doesn't have a proper, uh, proper punctuation. ¿verdad? No está usando correctamente los puntos, la coma, none of that. It is not using a coordinating conjunction. No está usando una palabra clave de unir, ¿verdad? El for, and, but, yet, yeah, or, so, or no. El fanboys. Okay, no está usando ninguna de esas palabras. Um, y no tiene, muchas veces no tiene punto ni semicolo. O sea, corre, ¿verdad? Imagínese run on, literally imagine running. <laughs> it never ends, right? So it's the same thing with run on sentences. They can be short or they can be long. They don't necessarily have to be long. And a long sentence also is not necessarily a run-on sentence. Una oración larga no necesariamente automáticamente es una oración run-on. Okay, porque puede tener la pronunciación y la punt eh, puntuación correcta. Okay. The best way to find or avoid, evitar, a escribir un run-on sentence es determinar si la oración tiene más de una oración independiente en la misma oración sin puntuación, que es usualmente lo que ocurre en un run-on sentence. For example, I love to write papers. I would write one every day if I had time. Okay, so you have two independent clauses, right? Two complete sentences in the same sentence without pronunciation, without any of these fanboys words, right? So it also can have even two subjects, right? Or a subject and its pronoun. So it can say, Lena, he, uh, Lena, she went to Smith. Lena uh, found uh, her favorite carrots, for example. So it's, com it's a complete sentence that continues Repitiendo el sujeto, repitiendo el pronombre, sin la puntuación correcta. Okay, so for example, the way I would fix this sentence, because this is a run-on sentence right here. I love to write papers. I would write one every day if I had time, right? That's the incorrect run-on sentence. How I would fix this, como lo arreglaría, I love to write papers and I would write one every day if I had time. Now it's a... Which one? Is it a complex or a compound? Look at the keyword. 
complex? Complex. It would be compound, right? Compound, because it has two dependent, um, yes, two dependent clause, independent clauses using a coordinating conjunction, which was and. Okay, so it would be a compound sentence. Remember, complex is when it has a dependent and an independent. Una de las dos no puede hacer sentido sola. Okay, and then the other example that I have, participants could leave the study at any time. They needed to indicate their, pres their preference. Even if it has a coma, this is still a run on because you have two complete sentences together without anything that unites them, okay? Sin algo que la une. So for example, because, this is the way I, we fix this. Because participants could leave the study at any time, they needed, uh, hold on, I can't see with this. They needed, I can't see my own screen. So hold on one second while this little thing goes. Oh, they needed to indicate their preference, okay? We added the word because at the beginning and it fixed the sentence. We're going to continue talking about run on sentence. Today is not the only day that we're gonna talk about this because it's a little complicated, okay? So I wanna make sure everyone understands this. And where you avoid this is in writing, okay? This is where you avoid this. Um, okay, so I'm going to quickly make our breakout rooms. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, Actually, I'm gonna keep sharing because that helps me make the rooms. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna create three rooms. One for Bert, one for Kim, and one for Janice and Lena. And then we're gonna do Janice, Marisol. Okay, for Kim, Kim, Aneli, um, Carlos Vero, and Azucena is not in today, neither is Marcela, um, Kim, just a heads up, and you need Madi. Then Bert, you have Bert, Maria, Isabel, Mireya, Nelly, and Raimundo. Okay, open your breakout rooms. Ma Reina, si te puedes unir al grupo, por favor. Reina, ¿te puedes unir al grupo? ¿Te llegó? Reina, es que tengo que entrar al cuarto yo y si entro te dejo sola, así que por eso quiero que asegurarme que tienes la invitación. Reina, me tengo que ir para el cuarto, ¿ok? Así que por favor, si me estás escuchando, entra, entra al cuarto, ¿ok? Okay, sorry, Reina, I'm not sure why she didn't accept, so she's still outside. Um, hopefully she gets it. Oh, there she is, perfect. Okay, um, so I'm going to start sharing and I'm just gonna ask everyone, we're going to do an activity where we are going to open our notebooks. Vamos a abrir nuestras libretas. And we're going to write five, we're going to write the lists. Okay, we're going to do how many lists? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, we have one and two, two lists. 
So we're going to do in our notebook two lists. Vamos a hacer dos listas, okay? In one list, we are going to write five names. It can be names like Lina, Yasmin, Marisol, anyone, okay? Five names. And then on the other list, in tu otra lista, you're going to write five actions, okay? Five verbs, five actions. So it can be eat, drink, drive, etc. Okay, so five actions and five names. Vianela and Reina, make sure to open your notebooks and write the sentences, okay? Oh, hagan las listas, perdón. Open your notebooks and write both, both lists. Once you're done with your lists, give me a thumbs up so I know you're done. Are we done with the lists? Five names and five actions. Okay. Marisol, Vianel, Reina, ya acabaron? Okay, Vianel, veo your hand. Perfect. Marisol and Reina, let me know if you're done, please. Marisol and Reina, if you could unmute yourself, please, so you can let me know. If not, I'm going to have to keep moving. <laughs> we lost Marisol. <laughs> I think she's having technical issues. Okay. Eh, Reina, no he escuchado de ti, así que voy a seguir. All right. Uh, we're going to keep going. So now what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to share my screen and open our whiteboard so you can see an example of what I want to ask you all to do. So I have five lists, right? One list can be Lina, Janice, Jamming, uh, 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 my dog's name, and <laughs> um, I'm going to do Maribel. Okay, and then I have another list. Okay, this is my list. And then I have another list of five actions. So I'm gonna say eat, drive, uh, learn, teach, uh, and listen. Okay, so what I want you to do is you're going to do one sentence with both the, the person, the name, and the verb and create a simple sentence. So for example, my simple sentence from the first list, taking Lina from the first list and eat from the second list. Lina eats um, uh, yogurt and fruit every morning. Okay, so I'm gonna make a sentence, a simple sentence using a name and a verb, a name and a verb, okay? And this is my object, because what do I eat? yogurt and fruit, okay? When? Every morning, okay? So I want you all to write five sentences using one, each one of these, one of name and one verb. So you should use all of them in your five sentences. Okay, entendieron? Do you understand any questions? Reina, ¿entendiste? Y Vianel, ¿entendiste? Sí. 
simple sen sentences, simple sentences like Lina teaching? Lina teaches every Monday and Wednesday. Yes. You have to make sure that the grammar is correct. Okay. So remember, Lina teaches because the verb has an S at the end because it's present, right? Así que la oración tiene que estar gramáticamente correcta. Usando, okay. un, u, usando un nombre y una acción de cada una de, de tus dos listas. Ok. 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 Reina, si me escucha, puede darte on mute. Just checking in, Reina. Okay. I don't hear her. As you finish your sentences, I'm going to go out and come back in case Marisol is outside, okay? So I will be right back. Voy a regresar enseguida. Marisol, ¿me escucha? Sí, estoy tratando de... Okay. Okay, te, voy, te voy a enviar la invitación para que entres al cuarto de nosotras, ¿ok? Ok. Ya han llegado. Ok, there we go. Uh, Marisol, what we're doing, lo que estamos haciendo es Estamos haciendo cinco oraciones con las cinco con las dos listas que debía yo no sé si ya sí. me escuchaste cuando hicimos sí. la lista de los cinco nombres y los cinco verbos the five names and the five verbs so you're gonna sí. take one of each and make a simple sentence okay so for example if you have Lina and eats Lina eats yogurt every morning okay so okay. I'm gonna make a sentence with the person and the verb mm -hmm. okay okay Super. Sí, ya tengo las, do las dos listas hechas. Okay, perfect. Good job. Viene, I see your hand. Does that mean that you finished? Maribel finished, perfect. Okay, since Mari, since a few of you already started, I'm gonna start going around and just me and Marisol can finish as we go around, okay? Um, Maribel, do you wanna read your five sentences, please? Yes. 
Bob works in the office every day and he has one day off. Good. Bob works in the office every day and he has one day off. Okay. That's not a simple sentence. That's a, which one? Which, which sentence is it? Um, look, look at your, look at the word that you use to combine both of them. Okay, only one simple is Bob wor works in the office every day. See, no, 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 you, Maribel, you're right. I'm just asking you if what type of sentence is it? The one it's, that you did that was long. It's complete sentence. It's a compound sentence, right? Because you're using the and. Conjunction. Conjunction. Exactly. Very good. Very good. And oh, there is Isabel sleeps in her bedroom, bedroom with her daughter. With her what? Daughter. With her daughter. So Isabel sleeps in her bedroom with her daughter. Very good. Okay. And other. Um, Magali is eating in the restaurant. Perfect. Uh, other. Montserrat studies in the school. Perfect. Montserrat studies in the school. Uh, Juan drives on the bridge to San Francisco. Juan drives on the bridge at San Francisco, right? Or do you mean the, San Fran the Golden Gate Bridge? Uh -huh, the Golden okay, Gate. so you can say Juan drives on the Golden Gate Bridge. And I'm gonna send it, I'm gonna write it on your chat so you can see it, how you on can the gate, Golden on Gate, the gate bridge. bridge. It's at San Francisco or at San? Um, you can just keep it on the Golden Gate Bridge because oh, oh, oh. we know that's in San okay. Francisco. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Um, Vianel, are you done? Be, um, I saw your hand. She should be. Yes. Okay. Read us your sentences. Okay. Reina, Reina Ward walks to the work. Reina, Reina walks. Re, Reina walks to work. Is that what you're to, saying? Yeah, to the work. Perfect. To work. Quita el do. Oh, okay. Take to out work. the do. Okay, yes. Very good. Lina teaches Mondays on Wednesday. Mondays and Wednesdays. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Taisha plays basketball Perfect. every day. Perfect. I see reading every day. I six re reads every day. Reads, okay. Every day. Shaila swimming for two days. So Shaila swims, swims for two days. Aha, uh -huh, for two days. For two days every week. Every week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good, Vianel. Uh, Jasmine, read us your sentences. Okay. Lina is working every day. Perfect. Good job on that for, for a present, a, ay, Dios mío. <laughs> present continuous. Very good. Uh, Reina swim two times a week. Did you add an S after swim? Swim two times a week. So it would be swims. I'm going to send it in the text, in the text. Swims with an S at the end. Because remember, he, she, it. Okay. Uh, Maribel walk her dog in the mornings. Maribel walks with an S. Walk. Same thing. Walk. Very good. Uh, Marisol is in the park with her diets every day. Marisol is in the park with her daughters every day. Perfect. Vianel, cook every day for your family. What do you have to add to that verb? Cook. 
what is a she, right? Because it's Vianel. So what she. what do you, what do you add to that verb? She is cook. Cooks. Oops. Cooks. Entiende por qué, right? Right. You understand why, Yasmin? Because remember, sí. in the present, if you have a he, a she, or it, or a name that is a he, she, or it, okay, puede ser Vianel, puede ser she, you always use an S on the verb. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good, Jasmine. Thank you. Um, and Marisol. Uh, espero que esté bien. <laughs> okay. Carlos eat the restaurant. Carlos, what do you have to do with that verb? Same thing I told Jasmine. Eat. What is it? Eat the restaurant. Eats, eats eat. at the restaurant or in the restaurant. Okay. I remember to okay. do your, your prepositions. Okay. Uh, Maria swims in the Saturday. So Maria swims on uh -huh. Saturdays. Mira el chat, okay? Te lo estoy enviando todo en el chat. Look at the okay. chat. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you, uh, okay. do you understand why, Marisol? Remember, remember your present verb when you have, hold on, let me do this. I'm going to do my little screen. Remember that when we have a present tense, okay, cuando tenemos el verbo, estamos hablando del presente. If you have he, she, or it, you always add an S at the end of the verb, okay? Oh. So it would be eats, it would be cooks, it would be drives, okay? Always with an okay. S at the end. Okay. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, ¿y en dónde me quedé? Okay. Uh, Carolina work every day. What do you have to do? Look, remember, what do you have work. to do to that verse? Huh? Work. Mira, mira el ejemplo que te di aquí. ¿Qué le tienes que añadir a ese verbo? Oh. What do you have to add? Sería entonces working? No oh. working porque no fue ing mm -hmm. que yo la añadí. Ok, entonces es es. No. No. Es solamente ese, Marisol. O sea, si tenemos works, acuérdate. Oh, ya, yeah, ya, yeah. ok. Yo pensé que okay. era S. Entonces, solo le tengo que abreviar la S. Sí, le, solamente le tienes okay. que añadir la S al verbo, add the S to the verb, when it's he, she, or it. Ok. okay. Juan es he. Vianel es uh -huh. she. Así que si tienes he, she, it, siempre añades S, no wow. ING, S. Ok. Ok. Uh -huh. okay. okay, me faltan dos. Yeah. I, no me and change, okay. cambia el verbo. Cambia, si ves el error, cámbialo. If you see okay. the error, change it. A ver, ok. Mónica Reis en the for July. What is that verb? ¿Qué es ese verbo? Mm, ella corre o oh, está she, en una carrera. So, say the sentence again. Uh, sería race. Read, read, read the sentence again. Mm, ¿Cómo? Léeme la oración de nuevo. Read me the sentence okay. again. Ok. Es Mónica Reis en the for July. For July race. Okay, so this is how this the sentence would be. Mónica runs on the 4th okay. of July race. Um, Janice, okay. would 4th of July be capitalized? You're on mute. <laughs> Yes, yes, it would. Yeah, right. But okay. I, but it could be Monica races it on could the 4th be. of July. Yes, it could be Monica races okay. on the 4th of July. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Could See? Be. Yeah. <laughs> and you add, remember <laughs> that because race, porque race escribe así, okay? Because race de correr, de competencia, se escribe con E. 
por eso le añadirías la racist. No es que le oh. estamos añadiendo ES. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Ok. Very good. In, What's your next one? Último, tenía yo Carla sleeping in the bed. So Carla is sleeping on the bed. Very good. Ok. <laughs> bueno. Al menos Very good. Una. Very good, very good. Okay. Um, race, race, is, race entonces es, corre, es competencia. Competencia. Okay. Exactamente. Oh, okay. Janice, you, you had a point. I have an, I have an idea. If we say Monica or he, she, it, they are single, not plural, single subjects. So the S. Maybe you can think Monica races. The S mm -hmm. is like connected to single, a single subject. I love it. So Maybe it helps. Yeah, no, definitely. Single S, you add the S, okay? If it's single present, si es presente singular, se añade la S. Piensen, singular, single, add, add the S. Okay, on he, she, it. Very good. This was a this was a hard exercise to create sentences. Okay, the other thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you an image. Okay, te voy a enseñar una foto. Um, opening the photo right now. Here we go. And then I am going to share my screen. So you are going to see the photo. Okay, this is the photo right here. And I want you to write five simple sentences you, about this picture. Okay, so five simple sentences about this picture. If you want to make it a compound sentence like Maribel did, feel free. You can use them with and. I would suggest that with Maribel. If you want to do compound sentence, feel free, okay? but five sentences about the drawing, okay? Sobre el dibujo. So look at the drawing and write five sentences about the drawing. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Lina, me perdí. ¿Qué teníamos que hacer? Eh, tenemos que hacer cinco oraciones, five sentences about the drawing, about what you see in the drawing. I have to write. Write five simple sentences about the drawing. Okay. Okay? Okay, gracias. Yes. It's going to be a lot of writing today. <laughs> <laughs> y no sé escribir. <laughs> yes, you do. You do know how to write. <laughs> I know you do. You all Lina, do. Yes. Lina, yes. can it be a question? It can. It can mm -hmm. be a question or it can be also uh, an exclamation mark too, an exclamation point. <laughs>
let me know if anyone finishes. Okay, Vianney, I see you're done. Vianen, do you want to share your sentences? Maribel is also done, okay. Okay, I see a cat. I see a cat. Where do you see a cat? <laughs> uh, outside the, the, the right uh, pumpkin house. Oh, right here, yes. I see ah. it. Yes, very good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see a yard. I see a yard. Very good. A yard. Uh, I see a little house. So I see, I don't see a little house because it's, it's not a little house. It's outside I don't, uh, oh, it's the answer from the punky what, house. What is it? It's not a little house. It's a. Is the enter, the a enter. What is this? You have a little one right here. What is this? It's not a little house. It's a, you, you decorate it. You decorate it in Vianney. Halloween. Me? Vianney, you, you decorate uh, okay. it in Halloween. Uh, or decorating Halloween. I what, see is, that. Yeah. what is it? What is this thing? It's a, a windows. I see a. It's a pumpkin, right? It's not a little house. It's a pumpkin. I see a pumpkin as a house. Pumpkin. Hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send it to you. Ooh, Yana, we can't hear you. Oh my God! Yes, please. Ah, hello. Now, yes, now I can hear you. Gina. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Two okay. tracks in the in the grass. I see tracks in the grass on the grass, right? Not no está on the grass. La grama, están on. Very good. I see uh, branches from tree. I see branches from trees. Very good. I see See, uh, it's the only I have because the others, uh, I, I see that dogs, is the other, it's outside the pictures. And I write those mm -hmm. sentences. Okay, okay. Very good, Vianel. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Y Maribel? Uh, the house is in the forest. The house is in the forest. Perfect. It is a pumpkin house beautiful it is a beautiful pumpkin house remember the adjective always comes first okay um how many people live in the house <laughs> how many people live in the house perfect very good the, the house has five big bedrooms very good. Mm. Uh, the family Adams live in a pumpkin house. 
<laughs> I love it, my <laughs> Really good. Very good. Okay, Jasmine, do you want to go? Okay. Uh, the pumpkin has six windows. Very good. So it has a very nice yard. Be a the house has six windows, so it has a very nice view, ¿verdad? Oh, porque tiene really mucha nice. ventana. View a vista. Porque you want to you wanna combine the sentences that they have something in common. Okay, oh. so if you're talking about the windows, make sure that the other one is also oh, talking okay. about the windows, okay? In this case, the, la vista, right? The view. Okay. Very good, but it's a great compound sentence using your so. Very good job. In the yard is a small pumpkin. In the yard is a small pumpkin. Very good. Uh, the, ha the little house pumpkin has a small door in the front. So the little pumpkin house, pumpkin mm -hmm. goes first. Okay, pumpkin va ante the house. Porque oh. la you're describing it, it's an adjective. So oh. the little pumpkin house has a, what was the end of your sentence? Has a, a small door. Perfect, has a small door, very good. Mm -hmm. Solo tengo es. <laughs> very good, Jamming. very good. I love that you tried your compound sentence. Good job. And Marisol. Oh, tenía otra, pero no sé oh. si estoy yo bien. Okay, read it. It, it, es que es cloudy, como el cielo está nublado. It's sky is cloudy, right? Oh. Very good. It's cloudy because it, remember when you add the, the apostrophe, it means it is. It, it so is. it oh, is okay. cloudy. Yeah. Exactly. It's sky is cloudy. Okay, Great. yo es que no sé si estaba bien eso. Okay. Very good, very good. And Marisol? Okay. Lo más seguro es que no esté yo bien, pero bueno. Stay positive, okay. stay positive. The house is a pumpkin. The house is a pumpkin, perfect. Mm -hmm. Fly in the windows, the house. So there you can say there is a fly on the window. In the house. Okay. Okay, there is, or you can say, um, like Viana said it, I see a fly on the window. Okay. Okay. Bueno, la siguiente is, he parks in the house. He mm. parks in the house. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good, with an S. Mm. Luego es, he cries, the house is green. He cries that, he cries that the house is green. Ajá, el pasto de la casa es verde. Pero que me está tratando de decir, what are you trying to say? That he, he, él llora cuando la... No, 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 no llora. El pasto es, el pasto de la casa es verde. Oh, so the grass... The grass of the house is green. Es que me the grass, bien. con do S with two S. The grass, es I'm going to write it here. Hold on. I'm going to write it. I'm going to write text. Es que lo, the, grass, the grass oh, okay. of the house is green. Grass. Okay. Es que si se me dificulta mucho pronunciarlo correctamente. No, okay. it's okay. The sky is black. So the sky, right, is black. Very good. Huh. Sí, exacto. Very good. Yeah. Esas son todas. Very good. Very good, Mar Marisol. See, this, uh, you weren't as bad as you thought you would be. Um, good job, my friends. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. And we are going to use a little bit of time because I do want to show you this great video and we might not have a lot of time to discuss it, but um, how much time? The video is six minutes. Oh, two, I'm gonna let it be. So, 
So I'm going to, you have about eight, well, not so much time, but I'm gonna share, share my sound. And I'm gonna show you a video of Martin Luther King um, or, or, okay, si quisieran, we can do another activity where we write, we figure out sentences, but I think the run on sentences might be too hard for you guys. Um, so I'm going to move us into here and we can just watch the video. Um, we can talk about it on Monday, okay? So I'm gonna put this video, let me know if you, can you hear it? Dr. King, a leader and a hero. Do you recognize this man? People all over the world know his face. They know his name. Now you will too. This is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he was an American hero. Dr. King was born in Atlanta, Georgia on January 15, 1929. That was more than 90 years ago. Here's a picture of Martin when he was six years old. He loved riding his bike, playing baseball, and eating ice cream. Martin's best friend was a boy who lived nearby, but that changed one day when his friend told him they couldn't play together anymore. His friend was white, and Martin was black. His friend's father didn't want his son playing with a black child. This made Martin sad and angry. He didn't understand why he couldn't play with his friend. During that time, there were laws in parts of our country that kept white people and black people apart. Keeping people apart like this is called segregation. The law said that black people and white people had to go to different schools, parks, and restaurants. The schools and parks for black people were often old and run down. Run down the The schools and parks for white people had newer books and better playgrounds. In some states, black and white people were not allowed to use the same water fountains and bathrooms. Buses were segregated too. When Martin was all grown up, the laws hadn't changed. He and many other people knew these laws were unfair, and the laws made him very angry. But he was a peaceful man. He did not want to use violence to change the laws. So what did he do? Dr. King used his words. He wrote letters, newspaper articles, and even books. He wanted to persuade people to end segregation. Persuade, persuade. He organized marches. He led big groups of people as they walked through streets. They all thought the laws were wrong. Other people saw these marches and began to ask themselves, are these laws really fair? Dr. King also gave speeches. He spoke in front of thousands of people. In 1963, Dr. King gave his most famous speech at a big march in Washington, D.C. He talked about his dreams for the future. He said he believed that someday the world would be a better place. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Dr. King's words made people feel hopeful. When he spoke, the crowd cheered and clapped. Some people cried and hugged each other. They also believed the time had come for things to change. His dream helped other people dare to dream too. There were still some people who didn't want the laws to change. They were angry with Dr. King for trying to change them. 
They tried to hurt him and his family. That was scary. But Dr. King was brave. He didn't let those people stop him. He kept working. He knew he was doing what was right. Dr. King was a great leader. He inspired many people. He made them feel brave and strong. He made them believe that together they could make a change. It can be hard for one person to change the world on his or her own. But when thousands of people work together, they can make a big difference. And they did. It took a long time, but the laws of segregation did finally change. Dr. King's leadership and hard work helped make the world a better place. Dr. King is no longer with us. Still, people remember him and continue his good work. We celebrate him every year in January on his birthday. On this day, we take time to think about his life and what he did for our country. But you can celebrate him every day. You can spread his message of love, peace, and fairness by treating others with kindness and respect. So, without writing, what, what were your favorite things about learning about Martin Luther King? And his birthday is on Monday. That's why we're watching this video. So, what, what do you think, what was your favorite parts about learning about Martin Luther King? He changed the world. world. He changed the world, right? He changed this country a lot. And, the, the, and he, it still needs a lot of work, but he did, he did a lot. And he, he ended the segregation. ¿verdad? That's a new word for us too. Una palabra nueva. What else? He made that, his dream. He made his dream, right? What else? Maribel. You seem like you want to uh, say something. He, yeah, he quality for the rice. He uh, helped. No, no, um, no separate the rice, a uh, black and white. Very good. So uh, no, no segregation, verdad? No segregation. Yes. Very good. Very good. Jasmine, what did you like about it? Um, so the many people is in the march for the white white people for against segregation, verdad? La palabra nueva, the new word, seg segregation. Seg segregation. Perfect. Segregation. Mm -hmm. Very good. That means that that's a good point. Very good. And Marisol, what about you? You're on mute. Ahora. ¿Cómo te lo digo en inglés? <laughs> Just let it, let it out. <laughs> Me da mucha pena porque muchas veces no te puedo contestar en inglés. Uh, lo que yo pude entender es try, que lucho try it, por... Try it in English. Try it in English. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna learn if you don't try. Deja de burlarte. No, de verdad que no 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 encuentro cómo cómo crear la oración. Okay, so tell me the sentence in Spanish and I'll tell you in English. Okay. Ah, él lo que trató fue que no hubiese diferencias. Very good. So what he tried is that there wouldn't be any differences. Okay, uh -huh. so there so they would not be differences. Very good, very good. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna show you a new video on Monday that is an empowering video because I feel like we need motivation with what's happening in this country. So where I'm going to use Martin Luther King's day to inspire us, okay, yeah. para inspirarnos. Así que vamos a hablar un poquito más de él el lunes, okay? okay. Um, so we're gonna join back the main classroom because it's time. Uh, so I'll see you in the main room, okay? Perfect. Hi, everyone. Sorry we're late. <laughs> okay.
very, very quickly. I know it's 718. I just wanted to make sure to show this to you. Um, this is, I hope you all were able to see your, um, the Martin Luther King video. Can you all see my seesaw right now? Solabang is seesaw? Okay. So we have two homeworks. I'm going to go really fast. We have part of speech and we have sentence and set, sentence fragments. Okay. The part of speech, como siempre, like usual, you do, you go to add response. And all you have to do is follow the same colors using the highlighter. We're gonna use the highlighter this time, okay? This one. And you're gonna choose the colors depending on the box. So you're going to highlight noun in red, pronouns in yellow, verbs in purple, and adjectives in orange. And you change colors by hitting the highlighter and going here to change the color, okay? And then for example, if I have, last week I visited a beautiful art gallery, my, na my noun, verdad, que es person, place, or thing, remember it says it right here, um, your noun would be art gallery, right? So I'm going to highlight, oop, but wait, that needs to be in red. So I'm gonna do red and I'm gonna highlight this in red. Okay, and I'm gonna highlight nouns in red, pronouns in yellow, verbs in blue, adjectives in, in orange, okay? This is your first homework. When you're done, you're gonna hit the check mark and you are done, okay? And then the second homework that you're going to do is the, where is it? Hold on, it took me out of it, here it is. The sentence and set sentence fragment is a sort, okay? Vamos a um, ponerla si va en esta columna o en esta columna. This, this column is a complete sentence. So it's a sentence that is a complete thought, okay? So this would be an independent clause. You would put each sentence, van a leer cada oración que está en el medio y la van a sortear dependiendo si es completa o no es completa. Ok, si es completa, va a mano izquierda en el sentence. Si no es completa, iría a mano derecha en el fragment. So I would highlight it and then I would move it over to wherever it goes. Ok, de acuerdo a donde vaya. All right, so those are your two homeworks. Again, if you have questions about homework, please call me or text me tomorrow between three and five. Ok. And then please, 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 please send me the thank you via email on the gift card, okay? Envíame una, unas oraciones de thank you para poder enviarse al donante de las tarjetas de Smith, okay? Very thank you. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Bert um, and Bert and Kim, let me know if you can complete the survey. Janice, you're with me, so I know, <laughs> no worries. If you have any feedback, go ahead and fill it out so I can, you can let me know. All right, everyone have a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B